Is your refrigerator spying on you? Does your Amazon Echo listen to all of your private conversations? Is your smart vacuum mapping your house on behalf of the People's Liberation Army? Okay, that last one was a little bit dramatic, but you get the idea. People have been loving the experience and the convenience of smart houses, and more specifically, smart devices. In fact, according to reviews.org, 85% of Americans own more than two smart devices. That means that there are hundreds of millions of smart devices in the US alone. That's that's a lot. And that number is expected to climb with over 41.6 billion smart devices worldwide. Each one of them networked and potentially vulnerable. And black hat hackers know it. Whether they are hacking on behalf of a nation state or a part of a cyber criminal group, hackers have shown that it's actually incredibly simple and easy to hack these devices. And yet at the same time, we don't even know how widespread it is. We just know that it's widespread because its impacts are being felt. Most of the time, whenever black hat hackers will hack the smart device, they typically tend to add it to a botnet or they will sell access on a criminal marketplace. If you don't know what a botnet is, think of it as a robot network. Basically, it's a giant network of computers that the hacker controls that they can do different things with, whether that's a distributed denial of service attack, password cracking, distributed crypto mining, or other kinds of miscellaneous tasks. Activities that you definitely do not want done by your toaster. However, that's not all that the attacker can do. In fact, if the device has a camera, then the attacker could either use that to spy on you or they could just stream it on the internet. And yes, that does happen. They can also use it to understand your home's layout or your own personal behaviors around your house. And that could help them break into your house and steal things without being caught. And don't think that your home security system is completely immune to this because depending on your own level of security and how you've applied that to your home's defense system, it may also be just as vulnerable. That said, there are a number of ways that you can dramatically reduce the amount of risk that you have in having smart devices. And we'll cover that in a moment, but first hack that like button so we can raise awareness on this issue around YouTube and also comment what your favorite smart home appliance is. For me, I'm a huge fan of the smart It's such a great accessory to your smart farm. So to understand how all of this happens, let's first try to understand why exactly it is that these hackers are doing this. After all, this will help us understand why it is exactly that they perform specific actions when hacking, and that also helps us know what we should do as a defense. Simply put, nine times out of 10, hackers are not really that interested in you specifically, they're interested in the access to your devices. Having said that, if you are somebody that's well off or if they know that you have something that they may be interested in, that may not necessarily be the case. But for your average everyday person, they're more interested in access to your smart device than they are in you in particular. And they will often take this access and sell it to another criminal. And as an example of that, we can look no further than Emotet, the world's most dangerous botnet. No, it's not a pharaoh. Emotet is also the name given to the people that operated the botnet. This botnet grew so large in part because they were able to break in and gain access to a number of people's smart devices. And they would ultimately sell portions of this botnet to other hacker groups on hacker marketplaces. That's one example, but that is also to say that a lot of these cyber criminals are motivated by two things, greed and speed. That's a tattoo idea. If you can take away the easy options for the attacker and force them to invest time, then you may actually get them to just abandon the attack altogether. And no, this is not a guarantee. Again, it also relies on them just attacking you out of convenience and not because they're actually interested in you and that they're also not going to just double down and invest the time either out of a challenge or out of a perceived escalated payoff. So to figure out how we can delay them and cause them pain in their attack, let's look at a couple steps that we can do here. By and large, a lot of attacks Hackers will attack devices that they've identified as being exposed on the internet. And especially if they are still using the default credentials that they were programmed with whenever they were shipped. Yeah, it's actually that simple. In fact, it's so simple that they can create custom scripts that aren't even that big or complicated to scan the internet for these kinds of devices and then log in using the default credentials. And while they won't get hits 100% of the time, they will get hits a fairly large percent of the time. That being said, if you've changed the credentials on your device, you're not necessarily out of the woods just yet. As long as your device can be seen on the internet, the attackers will have something to work with. 
maybe that's just in the form of them exploiting a known vulnerability to your device. Maybe even if that vulnerability has been fixed in an update and you haven't updated that device yet, or if they're able to gain information about that device or your network or even other devices on your network using the device that they found, that's not things that you really wanna just let the attacker have. With all that being said, how is it exactly that you can protect yourself? Well, first off, obviously, make sure that your device cannot be seen from the internet. And then second off, make sure that you have changed the default credentials. A lot of the default credentials can actually be Googled online. So you're not necessarily slipping one by anybody by keeping with the default credentials. They may actually already have your credentials if you're still using those. In fact, whenever you're changing these credentials, make sure that you're using a strong password and you can create and maintain and use a strong password very easily using NordPass. If you sign up for a two year membership, you actually get one month free using the affiliate link down in the video description or pin in the comments or going to nordpass.com slash studiosec. It's super easy, it's heckin' affordable, and it secures your account beautifully. After you do that, make sure that you enable multi-factor authentication. Most smart devices may have this feature, but if it doesn't, stay up to date as that might be a feature that they're gonna try to roll out soon. Next, make sure that you are routinely installing patches and updates to your device. Most of the time that should be done automatically, but if it's not being done automatically, make sure that you are the one that's staying up on that. Next, and this is if you really wanna get serious, make sure that your smart devices are segmented on your home network on a different segment than where you keep your computers and other sensitive devices. That way, even if the attackers are able to get into that device, they still have to jump segments on your home network that adds time and complexity to their attack. And of course, finally, make sure that your home router is secure. Again, this is the same th steps as with your smart devices. Don't use default credentials, enable multi-factor authentication, and generally try to default to the highest levels of security as much as possible. Now, none of these steps are perfect on their own. However, combined, they add a lot of complexity that the attacker has to resort to in order to pull off an attack, and most of the time, they'll just abandon it altogether. And that makes sure that your toaster is not working on behalf of Russia. Now, do not sleep on the power of a password manager with this or with any of your other security concerns. And to learn more about a password manager, check out this video. Or if you want security tips on social media, check out this video. With all that, I'll see you all next time. Bye.